Was no, not, no, now we're live. Now we're live. It wasn't going live. live. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, January 26, 2014. Now, uh, I, so I can't leave you guys alone. I can't the, leave the uh, show for all a right, week. Well, so before we get on to the big news here, let's. I'm going to introduce the team, and, and then we'll get on to the news of epic irony. So, uh, <laughs> so we got, uh, we got Bill McLaughlin. Hey, Bill. That's me. I wasn't here last week, so no, it's not my you, fault. You, you don't take no responsibility for what happened last week. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We got Dave Dickinson, who was here last week and should hey. have known better. <laughs> I, I sh I, I'm going to be betting every image we take from now yeah, on. Yeah, from out. here on out, we I'm are going to be staring carefully at everything we look at. Yeah. And we will also be having a cone of shame for David as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we will all have to share. We'll have to take we're going to discover a comment shame. next, so. Yeah, all right. We're yep. that. Scott Lewis. How's it going? You've moved. I, Your background is different. It is different. I am. I, I went for worse light pollution. I'm in the city of Los Angeles now. So Right down in the middle. Yes, I see the Ritz-Carlton out my window. Perfect. Oh, Good seeing. Now we got Stuart who's setting up and he's having some software issues. So right now we got one working telescope, but you can see his the haze of his uh, headlamp every now and then. There he goes. So there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Supernova. So as, soon as, he, as soon as he's back from line, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll let us know. And Tom Nathy, who should know better as well. Yep. Yes, yes. Hang my head in shame. Yeah. <laughs> so... So, uh, so if you haven't you've never seen this before, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up a bunch of telescopes into a live Google Plus Hangout, and by bunch I mean two. Tonight we've got Bill's telescope and we've got Stuart's telescope, and Stuart is still working with his, so it might come online a little later. So probably just Bill. So Bill, probably just pictures. Bill. Um, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be uh, moving through that pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, and so you can interact with us if you want. So you can use the Q&A app, which I have enabled for this Hangout. So you should see it. It should say, like, we're taking questions from the audience, and it's available in um, uh, anywhere you're watching this on YouTube. So, for example, um, Angel Roland has asked, I would like to know which telescope did each of you start with? Uh, Bill, what was your first telescope? Mine was a Ultima 8. Well, it depends on what you mean by first telescope. Uh, I guess when I was a kid, I had your standard garden variety department store 2.4-inch refractor that my parents bought me. But, uh, you know, when I got to be, a, uh, you know, an adult, uh, or at least as much as I ever did, um, uh, and my son got to be about 14. At that point in time, I bought an Ultima 8 so that we could both use it. Which is a Celestron SCT. That's for you, Steve. Um, okay, uh, Dave, what was your first telescope? I had a Jason 60 millimeter refractor. Again, the little department store refractor is about a hundred bucks. That was when I was a teenager, and this kind of thing you can see Saturn, you can see the moons of Jupiter, craters, and uh, like the Orion Nebula and things like that. And probably the first semi-serious telescope that I've got is uh, the eight inch. I'm actually still using that Celestron. Uh, C8 that I still use to this day that I got back in the 90s. I've had some other scopes come and go, but I really like that C8. It's just it's portable. It's a, it's a good star party scope. It puts the eyepiece right down where kids can view through it, and it's just an all-around good scope. Scott, what's your first telescope? Twitter. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working here. I have, I'm actually, I've never owned my own telescope. I've used others, and I have binoculars, which, yeah. because I am a nomad, and I've lived many, many places, and moving cross-country with a telescope is not a fun thing that you ever want to do. So when I get settled, I'll eventually buy my own, but I like using other people's, like <laughs> through here, <laughs> and doing that, because it's yeah. heavy, funky, and Thad's only a couple miles away from me. I'll go over to the Thad's and look at yeah, it. Yeah, he's got like a... Eight inch, twelve inch, yeah, it's a big inch, telescope. Yeah, yeah. Stuart, do you, what was your first telescope? It's probably still muted. Yeah, he's still working. He's muted. There I am. Am I unmuted? Oh. <clears throat> yep. Okay, I am still working, but I can't answer the question. Um, I had an eight inch Orion uh, Dobsonian telescope um, that I bought for 
Oh, I think at the time it was about two hundred fifty dollars, and I used that for a really long time, uh, for about ten years before I got my current scope. There you go, Tom. What was your first telescope? Uh, my very first scope as a kid was a little ninety millimeter junk score junk telescope um, that I promptly broke because it was made out of pot metal. But uh, as an adult, when I finally decided I'm going to do astronomy again, uh, I got a little five-inch uh, Celestron SCT. Had that for several years, and then moved into, into an eight-inch, and finally now I have an eleven-inch SCT. Uh, and mine was a four and a half-inch uh, Newtonian telescope that I bought when I was like 14 years old, and used that as a teenager. And then more recently, I had a hundred and six. A millimeter, about a, about a six-inch Newtonian Celestron. Next star, yeah. So um, I I need a new telescope. It's time. <laughs> I want I Stuart's that. telescope. Is what I want. I'm just waiting. Oh, for I know. It. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will add though. I did not own a telescope. I had a planetarium that I had in my room, and that's how I learned the night sky. Is I would, because I lived off in no man's land, and. We had this little projector type thing, and I got it for Christmas one year. And I would just sit there night after night, trying to figure out what I'm looking up at, and run outside and see if I could point it all out. <laughs> um, I would like okay, to have another so, observatory. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, so last week when we last saw our heroes, uh, we were looking at a bunch of stuff. We saw lots of great deep sky objects, and at a certain point, John Kramer put up an image of a galaxy, of M82. And I'm going to just, we can just relive this moment here. Let me just get this <laughs> set up. All right. Oh. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you can hear this. I to see the moon. Okay, good. All right, and hold on. Let's screen share this. All right. Sorry about this, everyone, but... Uh, yeah, that's a drum roll. It'll... <laughs> Are you using your second machine and your preamp and everything? All right, here we go. <laughs> On a nice night, you should be able to see the red spot if you know when it's coming by. We're talking about Jupiter. Um, John, what have you got here? What is this, John? This <laughs> is SCA 82. M82, which is a galaxy uh, also commonly called the Cigar Galaxy in Ursa Major. Yeah. Oh. And you can see uh, the dust, different distribution, I guess you call it, of dust in this particular galaxy. And what's that thing over on the left? Yeah, John, what's what is it? Thing? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, it shows just this amazing, it shows this star shaped galaxy, but then also this crazy sort of. Uh, and this supernova that's exploding <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> from this galaxy. Yeah, I can't that's... leave you guys alone for a <laughs> week. Can you? Gosh. Actually, I didn't even know about this until Astronomy you told me today. Uh, it's uh, here's the kicker. It, yeah. A, a huge, a lot of, a lot of dust in it. Also, it has a very active star forming region in it. In it. Um, and I don't think it's a producer of supernova. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom. You don't get paid to drink anymore. <laughs> No more Except second for, this for you. One. All right. I... Just go with your gut. It's yes, like sir. Albert. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Okay, so, uh, so I'll leave the video up here so you can all see. So this right here, right there, if you can see my little mouse, that is a supernova that went off and was announced on Tuesday. Tuesday night. Yep. Tuesday night. And we observed it. Sunday night. Sunday night. It was right in front of us. Mm -hmm. And if we had, like, if anyone in the star party, any of you watching it, had said, hey, guys, there's a weird bright spot right there. <laughs> right there. Like, it, like, we all see it now, right? Do we all see it? Can everyone yeah. see the oh, screen yeah. over there? Yeah. yeah? We were looking at it last night. Yeah, rubber noses in it. <laughs> It, it could have been worse. We could have been the civilization that got wiped out. By yeah, the fourth, yeah, the 4,000 <laughs> cubic light year space in, uh, yeah. in, in that galaxy that got completely wiped out. So here's a, here's a current image from Bill. So let's just go to it. Bill, uh, when did you take this picture? Uh, about five minutes ago. Perfect. So it's, still pretty, it's still pretty bright. Yeah, uh, can you point to the supernova, please? Yeah, it's right. Can you see the cursor? 
Yep. And it's right there. Okay, so the big right in... thing inside the galaxy is a supernova? Yeah. I think I think it's in the range of 10.5 magnitude right now, which when it was discovered that's was right around 11.5. Right. Yeah, for, for yeah. an extragalactic supernova, that's really bright. That's almost yeah. not quite binocular range. I can see M82 with my image stabilized binoculars, but I think the supernova is a little too faint. Yeah. So in the, in that previous image, by the way, it was flipped upside down just because the, the you know the telescopes can be aligned in different ways, and so John's John's telescope was aligned upside down from the way Bill's is. So that's why in John's image it was over on the left, and in this one it's on the right. But it's the same supernova, and this is I'm it right now. To, I'm going to open an RGB image of a wider field, and let me zoom in on it, and you can you can see it in this one too. Yeah. So there's M81 beside and it, and the then supernova yeah. again. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then. Uh, okay, I figured out my software problem, so I'll be getting images in a sec. Okay. I great. thought I had a guider connected, and it didn't. So. Yeah. Was it user error? <laughs> user error. Oh, okay. And so we're now a week late. But I think what what's really funny about this story is that lots of other people like us came out of the woodwork, kind of going, "Oh, yeah, I see it in my picture." And that the people who actually did you write a story on the on the discovery, David? Like. I did not. Bob King got to it first, so was, and and that that was the one day I decided to take off from writing is when this happened. It was on Wednesday, so I, I thought about jumping in and writing it, but then when I saw him in the back end that he was our equipment together, I was like, okay, somebody's got it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't. Anyway, so so here's the deal, everyone. Everyone watching, whenever we have put a galaxy up, just some part of your mind just kind of go, is there a supernova there. Yeah, just that, pull up a, pull up an image from Wikipedia. Put them side by side. Side by side. Does anything look different? Just like an yeah. old highlights magazine. Like which one yeah. is what's, is off, and you'll be fine. What's that little fuzzy yeah. next to it? Is that a comment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, you know, you you said David that we might try to discover a comet. Would be pretty or, tough, or, I think. Uh, or or you know, amateurs a few years ago remember that flash on Jupiter that happened while somebody happened to be running video. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know that. Those kind of things, that's not out of the realm of possibility. It would be unlikely, but, you know, it could. It has happened before. Yeah. Or like, say, white light bears on the sun, or, you know, those, you know it's, it's, uh, it's always worth keeping an eye out for those kind of things. So I want to show you another thing here, and this is, uh, this is, this is all good. This is from Michael Phillips, who, con, you know, commonly joins us in the Star Party, and he put this together, and I just want to share this with you, because it's just, it's so great. So Michael has been working on uh, a whole frame of Jupiter. And so check this out. Oh, wow. Oh, oh it's right. the other rotation. It's movie. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And is that an impact at the top there? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I kind of scanned through it. It was yeah. kind of interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. And when we wrote the article up, we actually compared this to the New Horizons rotation movie when New Horizons flew by Jupiter a few years ago. It, it, you know, it, it stacks up pretty good against it. Yeah, it really does, doesn't it? Look As a that. kind of a flashback, I remember one of my friends that was an imager at that time, and this t at this time we were imaging with ST4s, which was like 192 by 165 pixels. There was just teeny tiny. Oh. He actually did a very quick rot uh, animation of the... Uh, the Shoemaker-Levy impact uh, as it rotated, which uh, I wow. thought was pretty cool for those days, which was, you know, yeah. he's now, not only is Shoemaker-Levy deceased, so is my friend, but uh, it was pretty cool at the time. So wow. yeah, so so Mike, and I wish he was here to talk about it, but he uh, he put that together. It's not one night; he did it over several nights, but it's a full rotation of yeah, the planet. Yeah, he did that over like five nights. Yeah, and then he just stitched it together in in three D software. But uh, it's terrific. It's a wonderful, um, it's just a wonderful animation. So so good job, Mike. That's that's one that's one of the best things I've seen in the last you know six months. I, it's just fantastic. It feels like it's like the Hubble Space Telescope. It's amazing. So, okay, uh, well, let's get on with some of the images that we've got lined up. So, Bill, let's go with your first image here. Speaking well, speaking of, of supernova. speaking yeah. of supernovas, yes, exactly, <laughs> uh, which is one of the reasons I put it up there. This is the Crab Nebula, uh, a three-minute uh, um, grayscale image uh, with a 1,000-millimeter telescope. 
Um, and it is indeed a supernova remnant, and I'm sure that they can tell you more about that. Yeah, it's the Crab Nebula. Yeah, it was spotted by Chinese astronomers in what year? Uh, 1054. 1066 was the Norman Conquest, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was Haley's comment. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> What's great about this kind of object, though, is that we're seeing it in a fairly recent period. So, you know, it's only been expanding in the sky for about the last thousand years. And so right. it's going to dissipate, you know, over the next few thousand years. And so it's really just fortunate it's that we're seeing it. Extremely recent. I, I mean, think about it. You have 14 yeah. billion years compared to a thousand years. This is really, really recent. And so we get to see what, how these things, ex, you know, expand out from that flash of light like we're seeing now at M82, something fairly close up and watching it disperse out. They've made animations since they've been uh, doing photography on this, like with the Palomar Sky Surveys, and you can see the changes even over just the past 50 years, how it's yeah. expanded. So that is kind of neat, That because you think most of these nebula never really changed their appearance, but in the case of this one, that it's so recent that it is actually changing uh, over the span of a human lifetime, you can see a little bit of change in it. Yeah. Um, okay, so Larry Groom says, so what you're saying is that you guys had a picture of the supernova before it had been officially announced. Any idea, any idea of when the star went supernova? So I think it went supernova, what, Saturday or Sunday morning? So I think, I think I'd heard some other people had imaged in 82 and went back from last weekend, and, and uh, there were some other captures where people hadn't identified it, but they had captured it. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, we probably caught it within 24 hours of when it went off, and definitely a couple of days before it had been announced. But now, in retrospect, people are looking through their images, and lots of people caught the same, the same supernova. So, it was just a freak timing. Uh, Michael Jobin <laughs> says, "You just don't expect a supernova." That is exactly right. <laughs> uh, Bill, would you put something else up? Uh, same thing, uh, just a color image, uh, kind of blurry color image, but it gives you an idea of the color color on the Crab Nebula. It's where the first pulsar was discovered as well. Uh, Michael Jobin says, uh, "I did think it was a four. I did think that that was a foreground star. It did get my attention." So, there we go. Yeah, yeah, Why did you say or something, or Michael? Yeah, I, I see Michael. you commenting yeah. everywhere. Yeah, all you had to do, Michael, was just say, it's "Wait comment. a minute." It's funny, like yep. it's it's amazing just the psychology, just like how we're all just no one caught it. You, you know who we are right now? We are the Nicole Galucci's. Okay. <laughs> I, I see oh, it. I see it. Yeah, <laughs> now yeah. I see it. I love you, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bill, what's this? I think that's M thirty one. I think. No. No. Uh. Uh-uh. That's uh, M80, uh, M81. Next to M82. NGC 253. Sculptor uh, Galaxy. That was my next guess. Oh, of course. Yes. With a yeah. lot of drift, unfortunately, <laughs> in the in the image, but. And then I simultaneously got a color image of it. Let me bring that up. It, it was 253. Okay. Yeah. 253. Yep. All right. Where is it? That's amazing that it didn't make it as a messy object. It's pretty big. He, he missed a he missed a few things, and yet you know some objects. Yeah, like M1 made it on there. Well, so what I love on. about it is that you know it was it was uh, discovered by Herschel, but by Caroline Herschel. So it was oh. in seventeen. So and, and what I love about it, she's discovered so many things, and she's just doing a systematic comet hunt. She's yeah, looking she's for comets. And uh, she found this instead, which, hey. Eh, something happened to my color image, so I'll... Uh, Here, I'll, I'll share another one. Default to something else. And, and Messier included things like the Pleiades, which was kind of odd, and yet he missed the double clusters, say, between Perseus and Cassiopeia, which it, it just it's a very strange just thinking of how he compiled the cal his uh, catalog. Yeah. And he has, uh, what, two duplicates? 101, 102, is it? Yeah, I think there. I do remember reading that before. That I think it's 102 actually. 102. It's, it's a double star, or they, it was something that was in the catalog that was uh, spurious that didn't really. Yeah. Doesn't really probably really was there. a comet at the time. Yeah. Um, Eric Charlin is saying, "Hey, 
hey, Fraser, that's a first for the VSP. Uh, discovering a supernova? Not discovering a supernova? I think we've not discovered a supernova, yeah. so now, <laughs> so now I think still discovering a supernova is something that we could really do for the VSP. I guess we're talking about NGC... Uh, was it 453? 253? I think we've had that before. I think we've had the Sculpture Galaxy before. Yeah, 256. Yeah, I think so. 253, uh, you're right. Words, numbers. Uh, okay, there's the color image. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. That's great. Oh, there we are. Yeah, that looks wonderful. You can really see, I mean, this, this, you can really see the spiral structure, and you can see yeah. that the star-forming regions and just, like, all of this kind of swirling nebulosity around the, the core of the galaxy. This is a great, great picture. I'm, I'm checking the foreground stars against an image in Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 I got the other monitor going now. Yeah. It seems to me there was a, a, a supernova in 253, but it was a fair number of years ago. But since I've been doing astronomy, I think there was one. Hmm. Nope, it's clean. It, is a, it is a starburst galaxy with vigorous star formation and very dusty spiral arms. Not known for supernova production. <laughs> Not known for supernova production. Well, it's a star, no, it's a starburst None galaxy. So it yeah. Yeah. None yeah. It's yeah. clean. Um, all right, I'm going to go to Stuart's view, because, whoa, that's why. Oh, he's got the... Yeah. He's got the Orion Nebula. Yeah, this is the Orion. This is a one-minute uh, luminance uh, exposure. Um, I was, I'm was i set up to do color, but I'm so far behind, I'm going to skip it this week, So, because I'm just going to... I'm just going to try to crank out some crank out some data here, um, but this is nice for a one-minute exposure. It's um, you can see some of the uh, detail in the um, uh, kind of in the wispiness. Mm -hmm. Nice bowl That's shape too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a star party favorite. We were looking at this at a public star party I was doing last night. It's one of the best nebula to see in the North American atmosphere. Actually, it sits right on the on the celestial equator, just about. I think it's a little mm -hmm. below it. Well, people are always asking us to see the Orion Nebula. I mean, it's probably the nice one of the nicest objects you can it see. It is. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, and everyone wants yeah. to see it. And then finally, now we can show it. So, well, Bill will be able to get a nice color image of it if he can if he can get it. In fact, um, as we speak, yes. Oh, and really? this is you know, what oh. we're seeing, just this huge star-forming region. So there's just so much stellar. Oh, look at that. Oh, cool. A bit blown out in the core, but that's uh, one, a one-shot thing. You're, you're going to get that. It's such a wide field of view. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. And it, you know, some I, I have trouble understanding. You, know, you have all these different color palettes that you can choose from from doing photography. Because um, sometimes I see the see the Orion Nebula, and somebody's done like ultra deep hydrogen alpha, and that whole area, the entire frame, it's just nothing but hydrogen clouds. So I'm not sure how they do. They just do really long exposures in that area to pull out the uh, uh, tease out the color on that. Well, it really depends on what you know what you're looking at at what wavelengths for. So, there's right. a lot. If you're looking in the infrared, you're able to see through a lot of that clouds because it's mm -hmm. you know occluding the visible light, but you're able to see through it in the infrared. And so, it really right. depends on what wavelengths they're looking at and what color they're attributing to that when they bring it to oh, the image. Okay. So that's one thing I'm really looking forward to with like the James Webb Space Telescope is being able to look at these objects, but with such a large resolution inf infrared telescope, is going to be amazing. Uh, we're, yeah. I'm thinking even like Jupiter was going to look cool with this, but stuff like uh, the Orion Nebula is going to look fantastic in the infrared. Oh, geez. yeah. So I've got a question here from Henry Edinger. It says, is there a chance of catching good shots of larger nebula and DSOs with a DSLR mounted on a tripod with a lens that gives you about a 12-degree field of view on the sky? So yes, and then you and then you wanted to know sort of like what targets and exposure settings you recommend. So... Um, with a 12 degree field of view, I mean, you, you have to tell us what millimeter lens you're using, but it's, you know, if it's 12 degrees, like you must have like a, what, like a 14 or a 12 or something really wide. So you can run that pretty long. You can do a pretty long exposure with a, with a, with a lens that low millimeter. Um, you're going to want to set your ISO. 
Uh, so you wanted you try not to do exposure longer than about thirty seconds, I would say. Um, yeah. And I would I set your aperture, you know, set your aperture wide open, and then run the ISO as sort of as high as you have to. So holding everything else the same. And then, yeah. you know, if you can get away with a 1600 ISO or a, uh, you know, or less, that would be better, 800 ISO if you can. But that's going to give you, and then absolutely, you're going to get, you know, right. you're going to get some of these fainter, you know, clusters, and the, especially if you shoot towards, like, the, the core of the Milky Way, like into Sagittarius, it's going to look great. Um, and, you know, try and get the Milky Way, things like that. So, yeah, a lot of the pictures you see are just done that way. But if, if you, you want anything get... longer than 30 seconds with a tripod, you're going to start getting star some stuff. Yeah, you're going to start tracking. Yeah. yeah. And so what you want to do instead is you might want to... Um, there's a the inexpensive tripod that comes out of uh, Orion, I, I think. Ioptron makes it pretty good. For yeah, people. and it's a and it's like essentially it's a sky... It's it's one that's on a gear. It's motored, motorized, and so what you do is you, you, you put your DSLR on the thing, and then it'll track the sky at the rate that the sky is moving, and then you can use a much higher, you know, use like a 50 millimeter lens or an 80 millimeter lens, and you can really get some nice close-up stuff um, and not get the star trailing. So uh, People do make uh, what they call a barn door tracker that's just basically a hinge, and you're literally sitting there every 15 seconds and turning the wheel like a quarter turn if you want to be really cheap about it. For yeah, like but this this Orion's you know? yeah this Orion <laughs> one is like maybe less than a hundred dollars. Gary's got yeah. one. I wish he you know yeah. some of his he showed some pictures that he took and he, they're great. So so you can do some beautiful pictures with just a uh, with the DSLR and even you know something like a two hundred millimeter lens you can start to get some really pretty high resolution stuff. You can see the moon, Jupiter, the moons of Jupiter, things like that. So um, yeah, I, I, the the caveat I would have on that. Is be sure you're away from the city lights. You know, if you're if you in the city or or an urban environment, make sure you get rid of those lights because that 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 will uh, fog your background. Your your mm -hmm. deep sky stuff will will fog in the background. And the other thing to keep in mind is right is that Bill, like with this image here um, of Pleiades, is taken with his DSLR, right, just attached to his camera. He's taken with a DSLR his attached to a 500 millimeter telescope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. just a big lens on a, in front of his camera, and so a lot well, of people aren't all telescopes like that. Really, that's exactly it. You're just using yeah. the telescope as a lens to your, uh, yep. yeah, for your. Although, for your although with with camera lenses, the, since they're not really optimized for astronomy, you do tend to get more distortion of the stars uh, with a camera lens, unless you stop it way down, and of course then you're losing light sensitivity, but. Um, you know they're not going to be as good as a good telescope as far as the uh, as far as the stars go, but you know you'll get something reasonable in most cases. Yeah, yeah. So the Orion <laughs> mount is called well, it's in their Adventures in Astrophotography bundle, which is uh, who put that up there? Jim put that up there. Jim Meeker put that in, um, and it's there. And it's this mount. I'll sort of try and show you a picture. I see a larger image here. All right, let me see. I'm going to try and share this. Oops. My. Do it. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm working Faster. on. It. Okay, here we go. Go. So this is it here. So that's the mount. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And how much is that? Um, cheap, like under hundred bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. In this in this kit with a bunch of other stuff, it's like a hundred and. Fifty bucks, I think. So yeah, no, it's a yeah. it's a great way to go about it. Um, uh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's an eighty-five millimeter lens, and still, okay. says I have a twelve degree field of view. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah eighty-five yeah. millimeter. If it's you know if it's if it's got like a one point four um, app, you know, if you're like at a one point four, that's pretty good the aperture. Um, but you're still going to do really quick images with an eighty-five millimeter. You're going to get star trailing within ten seconds. So that's yeah, I would I, I would I, go to a fifty or even go wider, like try and get your hands on like a fourteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Try uh yeah, the Pleiades would be a really good thing to try because it's a they're big and they're nebulous, uh, you know, just just like that it with a photog with a picture. Yeah. Um but if yeah. you get that mount, if you get that mount that I just mentioned, then the eight, the eighty five will work work fine. And in fact, that yeah. level of zoom will be nice. You'll like it. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Let's move on. I'm going to move over to Stuart's view. 
uh, we'll this triangulate is... in on what Stuart's got. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Triangulum Galaxy, and um, I sort of nailed down how to image this. I've tried to image it for the VSP for the last uh, few years, two years, and um, uh, finally figured out uh, how to do it well. And um, so what I'm doing here is I actually imaged it bend and did a two-minute exposure to. Um, so I can try to get a little bit, just gather more light because it, it's very bright, but it has, um, but it's so big it has kind of low surface brightness. So you have to um, uh, really kind of gather the light to get the flocculentness. Yeah. The flockinicity. Oh, looks great. I, I, I would say this is definitely the best version of the Triangulum Galaxy you've done. It looks terrific. Yeah. So this, yeah, this, really this I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. nebulosity there. Yeah, and yeah. you know, again, it's 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 just grayscale. But you know, one of these one of these days when I'm when I'm not quite so far behind, I will get color for you. I promise, because I figured out how to do it. Have you really? Excellent. Yeah, but it's it, but, it, but it's but it's going to be but it's but it's one of these things where I have to download RGB and mm -hmm. then and then Switch. align them and then and then color create and then yeah. stretch and then saturate. So it's it's you know it's a Oh well, well. It sounds like you can it. write a script for that. Yeah. And like, yeah. Well, let's try <laughs> test, uh, a few tests and see how it looks. But I think that yeah. that sounds great. Um, yeah. but this is beautiful. So what's great about Triangulum? So there's three major galaxies in the local group yep. of galaxies. There is Andromeda. There's the Triangulum Galaxy, and there's the Milky Way. And Andromeda is the big one. Um, I'm not sure which is bigger, Milky Way or Triangulum. I, I think Andromeda is. The big draw is the big one. Yeah, no, by far. Yeah. Um, then, then it's us, and then Triangulum, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, know, I like, know this one at the, the eyepiece. This one almost disappears at the eyepiece with the least little bit of light pollution. It's uh, it's uh, it's harder to find than you would think, visually. Yeah, it's yeah. the third largest. So it's after the Milky Way. Yeah, because I think it has around 40 billion stars in it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not a lot, especially compared to what we've got here. So. All right, I'm going to move over to Bill's new view. Oh, look at that. I it's, don't know uh, what this is. I see something. <laughs> I see space objects. I see space I objects. Yeah, I see stars. Yep. Yeah, I don't oh. know what that is. What is it, Bill? Good question. It looks like a Bernard dark nebula. And I would say you can see them. some of the like bulky globules in there, yeah. Yeah. Dark area. That's the Cone Nebula in Monoceros. Uh, oh! Yeah. The Cone part of it, otherwise known as the Christmas tree, and that part's right down in yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing such a wide view of that. Yeah, and that actually came out better than I thought it would uh, for a color image, a uh, yeah. quick color image. And I'm not sure what clusters these are. I'd have to look them up. Yeah. yeah. There's one to the upper, my upper right. There's like a open cluster there. Yeah. You got lot, lots of little dark dust lines and very cool. That's really nice. Now oh. this is this is also a star forming region within in the bright areas there, right? I believe so, yes. I'm not the expert on that. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Hey, Tom, are there many uh, supernovae there? <laughs> not enough supernovae. No, no, no. no moss, no moss. <laughs> <laughs> so this was actually discovered by William Herschel. So we have the Herschels all up in this VSP tonight. Pretty much. Well, he had the largest telescope of his time, so he, he yeah. kind of had, uh, he, 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 he could see things that nobody else could see for a good time, amount of time. So Jonathan Kelly asked a question that is completely out of our normal realm, which is, which do you think will happen first? A corporate entity puts a person on Mars, or a governmental body puts a person on Mars? <laughs> Private enterprise. Elon I Musk. Mm. I don't know. I, I'd say collaboration. I'm going to say collaboration. But I think they're yeah. going to be put there by corporations. They're going to be the ones with the equipment there, but it's going to be funded by a it'll, government or a group of governments. It'll be a government rocket and a corporate crew. Uh, it, yeah. will be, uh, it will be Elon yeah. Musk's team. Yeah. Yeah. He has that, that guy has built a rocket company for this purpose. 
Oh, yes. I yeah. mean, yeah. You, you and I were just there a few months yeah. ago, and it was freaking yeah. amazing. Yeah, oh. and everyone's walking around, and, like, we are going to Mars. Yeah. That's they're, they're why actually, they're there. They know that's why they're doing this stuff. But the thing is, they're actually all robots, so it's not yeah. really people going to Mars. It's just like <laughs> robot. We are going to Mars. Yeah. One no, of it, us. And they really are. They are so pumped yeah, for totally. that purpose. Yeah. It, you know, I just I think they are going to Mars. They are going to be the vessel to get it there, but I think it's going to be funded by, by governments. All right. Yeah. So, I they, think they, what's going to happen is there's going to be all the people on this Mars one is it Mars One? Yeah. Mars yeah. One. yeah, yeah. You know, all these volunteers and all this work and all this is going to happen, and they're going to stumble, and Elon Musk is going to pick up the torch and carry it to the. Uh, Elon's like, oh, isn't that cute? Here, I'll show you to do it. Yeah, let me just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to see us be able to put a self-sustaining colony somewhere like Antarctica or something first, just to prove we could do it. You know, yeah. something yeah. somewhere a little less because because we can't even do that right now, <laughs> or like the International Space Station that still needs resupply right now. So, so Michael Jobin asks, um, so why do we think that our galaxy is not headed for Andromeda? Ours is half as big. It is. Absolutely. It is, yeah. We are the one crashing. We are the one being sucked into Andromeda. It is not the other way around. And in six no, billion, Of course, they're both. That's the way gravity works. Is well, yeah. They attract to each other. Yeah, yeah. mutual attraction. Yeah. But it's got four times the mass of the Milky Way. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. So, yeah, yeah. They're, we're flying right for each other. It's just, you know... There's so much mass, but it's so dispersed when we're thinking of stars. It's just a big swarm of bees, of yep. big space bees flying at one another. The um, killer bees. Uh, Brian Lefkowitz <laughs> asks, can the supernova be seen with binoculars? And if so, where is it located in the sky? Uh, you can see it in binoculars now, can't you, David? Like, just barely? No, it's, it's, it's not quite. I usually consider for a good dark sky that 10th magnitude is binocular cutoffs. It's a little below that, like 10.5. But you can see it with a moderate-sized telescope. We we saw it last night with a 12 inch out of the Starkey Park, a 12 inch Dobsonian uh, Newtonian reflector last night. It's in M82, which is in Ursa Major. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's like just below the handle on Ursa Major, right? No, it's uh, it, it's it's off the end of the the bowl of the Dipper, kind of in a way. It's, right, right, right. Uh, okay. You're thinking of M51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the M51. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the pair M81, M82 is off. It's it's always off the because the uh, the asterism of the bowl of the Big Dipper is actually only a part of Ursa Major, the Big Bear constellation. Actually, extends quite a ways out. Yeah, uh, a good reference, uh, free free online thing to get is the Ultimate Messier log op, uh, log group or log book. Um, free. Uh, you can download it and it'll have all sorts of uh, good information on how to find these Messier objects. So you can do it's, that for year-round. It's pretty well placed too because here in Florida we're about 30 degrees north latitude, about 9 o'clock or so it's in the northeast, about 20 degrees above the horizon. So it's, it's decently placed in the evening to start catching it about past 9 o'clock or so for northern yeah. hemisphere viewers. Uh, what do you got, Stuart? Uh, well, we were talking about um, Herschel, and this is Caroline's rose, and I believe wasn't Caroline uh, Herschel's wife? Sister. sister. No. Sister. Oh, sister. sister. His sister. Okay, yeah. so this is Caroline's rose, and um, ah. this was discovered by her, and it's actually one of my favorite cl open clusters in the sky. Oh, cool. Right on. Yeah, Caroline was no slouch when it came to observing. She did good. She found, uh, I think, at least half a dozen comets to discover yeah. comets. Uh, Larry Groom asks, what is the website that's used to announce supernovae and comets? Ooh. I know uh, they eventually I, I, have to be confirmed by the IAU, but... Yeah, they, they, have... they come out of the astron astronomer's telegram is uh, is where usually you see the official announcement come through. But there's supernova. There's there's supernova being discovered almost every week that are usually like the 17th or 18th magnitude. This one was special that it was so close and so bright. So yeah, uh, I've I've used uh, Skyhound. Uh, he's the guy who writes uh, the program for Sky Tools, but he's a big comet chaser as well. Uh, he's got quite a list on, on the comets. Supernova, I think, is through Rochester Amateur Astronomy Club out of yeah. New York. They, they so, have quite a list. 
while we're waiting for some more images from Bill, uh, Scott, why don't we dig up some of the images on the event page? I'll, I'll go first. Um, so if you want someone to ask this, you know, can, where can we share my our images? So you can actually share these on the Virtual Star Party event page. Um, and we love it. Which is Please over on the part. Do, unless yeah, they're we crap love it and you, fake, you know, and I will delete them faster than you can even put them <laughs> so up. So this one came from Michael Field, and it is my favorite, one of my favorite objects. Check it out. Ooh. So that's the rosette. Yes. In hydrogen alpha, N2 and O3, so oxygen. But uh, but yeah, look at that, the rosette. See, I will. Thanks, Michael. That's one awesome. One up you. Will you? Yeah. Because it's gonna look like I'm bringing a live telescope in. Ready? All right. Look at that moon. It's live. Whoa. Yes. Wow, steady skies. So this is from Jason H. here, and you know it looks like he's just been able to... I don't know if that's being auto-awesomed by Google+. Plus. No, it is a GIF he made. So yeah. it's just a bunch of frames that he was able to turn into a brief animation, but you're able to see what goes on when looking through the atmosphere. So you're getting the distortion of light looking, you know, looking at the moon. So I love how that's able to come up now. That is incredible. Yeah. That is some calm air. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's right. that's exceptional. So here is the uh, horse head nebula from also from Michael. That. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, the horse head is so hard to image. <laughs> so, so, the flame nebula off there to the left is is just superbly easy to do, but the, getting the horse head itself, boy, I've I've tried numerous times <laughs> and just keep failing yeah, miserably. Yeah. When you're looking at this area visually, you don't really see much of anything. So. Well, it, yeah. it's funny. So when we first started the virtual star parties uh, about, what, two years ago now? Two yeah, years I ago. Think. Two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, and, and we were sort of, we'd done some first rough things of like, you know, the moon and Jupiter, and it, we couldn't believe that it was happening. And, uh, and then Gary reached out to me and he said, you know, I'd, I'd like to help out. You know, tell me if what I'm doing is good enough. And so he, we went into a hangout with Gary, and he was showing us the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula and <laughs> Andromeda, and it, we, just, we couldn't believe the detail. And then I just knew at that point that that everything was possible. Everything was on the table, yeah. and right. it's just gotten better and better. And so the Horsehead Nebula, for me, like I thought, like maybe if we took years and really worked at it, we could figure out a way to get something like the Horsehead Nebula in the Virtual Star Party. But he he, he had it right from day one, so it was amazing. All right, I'm gonna go to Tom. Tom, what are you sharing? Uh, this is what I took last night. This is M82, uh, my favorite galaxy now. And uh, so that's it's too late. Uh, yeah, too late. <laughs> uh, have this little bright dot inside the galaxy. <laughs> But what I like is the, the the glow, the orange glow in the center yeah. of the galaxy. That that just came out really neat. Um, but also to show you that there is a problem with my camera, I'm using a DSLR on this. See these red streaks you on got some, here? Got some hot pixels there. Yeah, I got those are hot pixels, and and also the telescope is slightly misaligned. That's why they're aligned. So, so I have you know 35 what I like the most about that, Tom? That image right there. Is there's this Whoops, supernova going on in the galaxy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should be aware of that. Okay. Yeah. Rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go to Bill's view. Bill, what do we got? I'm up. And this is uh, Thor's helmet. Oh yeah. And I've got some drift. This is a. Lo I've got a color image here in a second, but. Um, yeah, it's Thor's helmet. I guess this part must be the helmet, and this part must be the little wing things that uh, you know the Scandinavians put on their helmets. I guess. Um, Brian left with wonders: Is there a prize for discovering a supernova other than you know discovering a supernova? Uh, no, there isn't, and you don't even get it named after you. Don't get it named. That's only comets. Yeah. Yeah, only comets. In the and case can, of asteroid. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, you can name asteroids if you're. An if you discover yeah. an asteroid, you can propose the name of propose the asteroid the 
to yeah. the International Astronomical Union, and they'll consider the name. Consider it. Yeah. And hopefully, if you discover a comet, it's not the extinction level event coming to wipe the solar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if so, otherwise, it's got your name on it. Came. What would it be? Would it be Comet <laughs> Virtual Star Party? This. It's, it's well, we're Earth. saying they 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 name them after surveys like Pan Stars and Linear. Yeah. So I don't know why yeah. if we discovered yeah. one, it wouldn't be Comet Virtual Star Party. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm oh, watching they don't decide to kill the, the messenger. Marketing. That would be the. the All right. So next time. We, when you guys have some free time and I have some free time, I'm just going to go on air. All right, look for comments, boys. For comments, let's go. Right. Yeah. I'm going to get some beers, yeah. just sit here and talk. Yeah, Can see. you is guys that look a comment? for comments? No. Is that a comment? No. <laughs> well, we, we were talking before the show, uh, Comet Hale Bop, at least one of the discoverers that found it, he was actually looking at Nebula. I think it was M8. I think he was looking at Lagoon Nebula when he saw this little fuzzy patch next to it. And he just happened to have the, the uh, presence of mind to say, hey, there's a comet there. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, this, uh, it was the same thing with Shoemaker Levy. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they they imaged, they knew the comet was there, but they imaged it, and all of a sudden, after it passed Jupiter, and it broke up, and it was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this, so Thor's helmet. Uh, what kind of nebula is this? Nobody knows. You know, I'm not really sure. I yeah I. Um, in the mission nebula. nebula. Boom. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna move over to Stuart to you. Another emission nebula. Uh, this is actually a combination emission and um, reflection nebula. Uh, this is um, the Flaming Star Nebula, IC 405, and um, I I I really like this a particular image. This is another image that's sort of difficult to to do. It's rather dim for a VSP, but again, I use the bidding two-minute technique and um, uh, uh, stretched it, crunched it, um, noise, redu re noise reduced it, and it's actually pretty good for 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 this. You can reduce your noise, Stuart? Yeah. <laughs> Stretch it, reduce it. Uh, let's see if we get any more questions here. Stretch it out, put it uh, out. Sterling Gothop notes that then Bruce Willis would have to destroy our comet named after us, and that would be there. You go. So, yeah. No, <laughs> so, oh. Buscemi or nothing. Yeah. Buscemi's dead. Yeah. It would be worth it. It would be worth it. Uh, here's another image from um, from the event page. This is from oh, James great. McGee. Oh, James was uh, was here last week. Oh, nice work, James. Oh, wow. cool. Yes. Yeah, James. James was bringing the moon, or two weeks ago. Yeah, but yeah, but now wow. nice. Nice deep sky work. That's amazing. Yep, it's uh, 170 yeah. images, 20 seconds each. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. It's insane. Great it looks job. Like a painting. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And he's using this is a so like this is a six inch telescope that he's yep. doing this with, and with a Canon 6D. I'm trying to think what a 6D would cost. Well, here since you know he's got some really oh, good resolution that, here, so I can I can definitely zoom in here. Yeah, yeah. Sixty, I think, is is it like around eight hundred dollars? Because yeah. the sixty sixty D is is twelve hundred. Yeah, yeah. And then then the five D. The numbers don't make any sense. But but I mean, you, yeah. you know, with a T three, even like a T two, T one. For I think Stuart for the longest time was using like a T two, I think, or a T three. A T one, yeah. T one, yeah. Okay, yeah, you can yeah. pick one of those up for a couple hundred dollars now. Uh, yeah, use. it's just a body, and yeah, they're 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 cheap used. Yeah. Hey, the rosette from Bill. Yet again, yes. Ooh, very cool. But you can really see the difference that I showed you before: the hydrogen alpha view, and then this is the this is the visible light view. It's very faint in visible light. Well, yeah, because it's mainly a H two region, so yeah. which is why it's looking very pink and reddish. I love the tendrils that you can see inside there. The, yeah, the these black, lights. yeah, these sort of black yeah, cool. lines in there, and then all this, this. It's like it's got a star cluster in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Gonna eat your soul. <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh, Michael's just been sharing all kinds of great pictures on the event page. Thanks, Michael. I'm gonna. Here's his crab nebula. Somebody's slowing. I can hear it. 
<laughs> Stewart? Yes. What? Stu? Sorry. Here's what? Right. what? 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 No, so here's uh, here's Michael Fields' no, uh, Crab Nebula in the uh, in the event here, which is just beautiful. Look at that. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it, crab is fun to see in color. Yeah. And then here's yeah. Paul Hutchinson. He's sharing his view of the moon, which is really nice. I love love the way this came out. Ooh. Just the contrast for yeah. class. Yeah. Just you know, seeing the the varying degrees of albedo, just from you know how bright it is over here, and how dark it is from the mare, and just right there is the Terminator. <laughs> At the very edge of the Bay of Rainbows, there where the U2 rover is right now. Yeah. Very, my the, the bottom left of my view. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is one of my favorite areas of the moon because I, I really love the Alpine Valley. Is that vertical gash to the right of? Uh, they don't Plato. have trees on the moon, Tom. <laughs> I didn't say they. There's had not trees. a supernova there either. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great picture of the moon. I love yeah. it. Yeah, but Thank I still so like the, still like the Alpine Valley. That's yeah. that's a beautiful sight. Very cool. No, thanks a lot, Paul, for that. That's great. I'm really thanking Paul Stewart, but he's silent today, so bye, Paul Stewart. <laughs> You're no longer my favorite Paul. Uh, Russell Bateman says, Primordial black holes scare me more than comets. No way to stop them, and they can cut through the earth like tissue paper. <laughs> yeah. Well, well you know, the last time holes. that happened... Oh, wait. No. Okay. Yeah. Com well, comets are much the, more... The universe is trying to kill us all. There's so yeah. many ways to do it, so just... Comets are much more prevalent in our local solar neighborhood than black yeah. holes. We, we, we would see some kind of gravitational influence if there was a really big black hole nearby. Yeah. yeah. Phil Plate's book say, on David? that is good. Yeah. I, I put on a little weight. You don't have to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you, you've built up all that muscle for moving. Yeah, I'm throwing on my back, so I'm gimping around. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kelsey... Uh, Drew wants to know, can you give us an idea of the size and distance from us? It seems impossible for me to get my mind around how large these things are. It depends on the thing. Um, so we'll look at the rosette for example. Well, the Crab Nebula for starters. So the Crab Nebula is... How big is it? It's about 11 light years across. So, so that's you know, insane, 11 dude. light years. Yeah. yeah. There, so, 11? What's 11? That's 11, I've decided. So to, so to give a, an idea of what we're talking about, because even saying light year, trying to imagine this in, insane amount of distance, the with the speed of light going from the sun to us is 8 minutes, 20 seconds. So that's, you know, tiny amounts. When we talk about a light year, that's the amount of time that light, you know, the amount of time it takes for light to move or a, the distance of light per year. So, who said 11? That's it's 11. It's 11 light years across, and it's 6,500 light years away. Right. So, yeah. which is still tiny on a cosmic scale, but yeah. when it comes to us puny humans on this tiny little <laughs> rock floating around a star, you know, that's huge. But, yeah, that's... Just trying to wrap your mind around the scale of the universe is... It hurts my brain. Yeah. Well, what, one analogy that I used was you know, if you walked from San Francisco to New York City, you can do need that. New shoes. Yeah, you're going to need new shoes. You could do it in almost a year. So you could consider that a light year just by walking. So do that <laughs> ten more times, and then you know it gives you a feel for how far away the Crab Nebula is. <laughs> Um, the, and the rosette is 130 light years across, so it's about 10 times bigger than the Crab Nebula across, mm -hmm, yeah. but it is 5,500 5, light years away. Yeah. So it's, it's a little less. Light years. Hmm? The rosette? The rosette is 130 light years across. Right, but it's and about 5,000 light years. About 5,000 light years away, yeah. 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 So it's a little closer, and it's a, but it's about ten times bigger, and so it is actually a lot bigger in the sky, right, than the Crab Nebula is. Um, the Horsehead Nebula here that Stuart is showing us, 
yes, this is a, um, I framed it badly, but I didn't want to bother uh, retaking it. It's um, this is uh, uh, three minutes at uh, two by two bin and uh, luminance exposure, and it's um, you can at least make it out. I'll zoom in on the horse part of it. And so it's about 1,500 light years away. So yeah, it's about so, a third the distance that the Rosette Nebula was. Yeah, so it's a lot closer. Yeah, on M42. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's right off the But Delta it's also Orion. a lot smaller. Yeah. You know, it's probably only a couple of light years across. Yeah. And the reason why it's bent, <laughs> and Scott could probably do, be, explain this better, um, you know, the the... the the horse head shape, you, you got light pressure coming from stars uh, uh, from, I guess it would be up to the uh, right there. It's actually bending the dust cloud there. It's physically just laying it over like that. And uh, over a period of time, that's, that's slowly being eroded away, just much like uh, a stream of water on some mud. That and space ponies is the big space reason ponies. Yes. The Nebula, <laughs> space yeah, ponies. Yes. Yeah. Space ponies. Yeah. But yeah, oh, there's so many. There's so much that's going on out there when you're seeing these these clouds of gas and you're dealing with any of the radiation and, and everything that's going on. You're it's going to be molding and melding and it's yeah. it's just so dynamic when you're looking yeah. at these different bodies out there. Well, we always whenever Gravity. we get around to to seeing the. Uh, the pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula, we always yeah. note that probably those pillars have actually been destroyed. They're gone. Because right. of, yeah. a, of a supernova. Yeah. Um, we're, we're back to Triangulum. Yeah, I was going to say, in 33. Yep, back to Triangulum, colors. Nice. I don't see a supernova. Are we all looking for a supernova? <laughs> it's already been vetted earlier no, on. I'm looking for <laughs> right. okay. Unless it went off in like the last 20 minutes. <laughs> that would be fast. Uh, a really quick discovery, yeah. Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, I think we need to uh, wrap this thing up. We're at an hour, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this down. So we'll go back to Stuart's last view. Okay. This is um, something we don't often image. This is the Little Dumbbell Nebula, uh, M yes. oh. M76, and this is yep. pretty heavily cropped. It's a tiny little planetary nebula. Um, uh, and um, it has color in it, in which I couldn't get, obviously. But uh, you can at least see that it's um, sort of the blobbiness uh, does have kind of the dumbbell look to it, if you see here. Nice that's work. It. It's a TIE fighter. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, it's I a think TIE fighter. The TIE fighter. That's good. The TIE fighter. The TIE fighter nebula. <laughs> there we go. It's in make it. Internet, thing, make no. that stick. <laughs> I have right. redeemed myself. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, okay. it no, I don't it still need to do penance, okay. Yeah. All, yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay, well we should start to well so Stuart and Bill, so thanks to both of you guys for, for yeah, you guys keeping up to Absolutely. keeping up the pace on, on all of these images. I'm gonna go back because I mean we had just the two of you going. Normally we have six people or more telescopes, and tonight we just had the two of you. So we really appreciate it. You guys were were really rocking it. So thank, yeah, you, thank so you. Everything much. worked at least. Yeah, yeah it worked like a charm. It was great. I was I wasn't sure. Like I almost pulled the plug on tonight's <laughs> virtual star party, but uh, but well, my heart rate has come down after my initial software problem. So I, I think we'll keep Bill <laughs> around. That's cool. And Stuart, you know, yeah. we'll keep you guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I and mean, they, they weren't part of the. Uh, of the supernova incident. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was watching a football fault. game. I don't know what your excuse was. Yeah, yeah. You would have seen it. <laughs> uh, cool. So, Bill, uh, again, thank you very much for. No for problem. I mean, last week I would have been there. Actually, I had uh, my friend Tom Carrick, who was also an imager, was uh, was over here, and we went and did some conventional photography during the day. And we had intended, since he has a uh, a scope at New Mexico Skies, we had intended to go ahead and try to bring that to the star party, but uh, the conditions were not cooperating. Oh, well. Uh, boy, Dave Dickinson, and just so people can know where to find out more, where do they find out more? Did we lose him? No, he's he's in Florida. Everyone Astro go to Florida guys, and Astro look for guys Dave. with a Z on yes. Twitter. Yeah. And uh, Scott, what's coming up uh, shortly for you guys? <sighs> 
Um, I, I just oh. moved. Let me think. Um, I don't think we have anything big with Hubble or Frontier Fields this week. Um, we have transitioned everything with our Space Fan News layout, though, so instead of recording them, we are doing them live right now on our on our uh, new YouTube channel, but our page on Google Plus just reached uh, a thousand, or not a thousand, but a million followers, so wow. we're really jazzed about that. And That's yeah, awesome. we're, So Space Fan News is at 9 Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific every Friday. Fantastic. All right. And Stuart, thank you so much. My Thanks pleasure. for braving the uh, the cold San Francisco uh, weather. It's, it's actually beautiful here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. And Tom, we will. Uh, yes. Thanks again for, for pitching in and bringing the mind power. Really appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. Just, All right. just keep me away from the supernova. Oh, no, now no, I think they're. Never I make think, that mistake again. I know, yeah. I guarantee <laughs> that you will be seeing supernova everywhere you look now. And so. even if it was coming up on you, you wouldn't even notice it. So yeah. don't worry yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you can't. You... I'm, I'm just a toasted marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, again, my name is Fraser Kane, and uh, you can find. I'm the publisher of University Today. You can find that at universityday.com. We're posting. Lots and lots of cool uh, space videos to the Universe Today channel, so you can check that out on YouTube. And we've also started to put this stuff on iTunes. So iTunes, right. if you don't like to go to YouTube and you want to just have this stuff downloaded and show up on your portable device, either audio or video, you can do that. We've put all of our explainer videos, and next up we're going to put all of the virtual star parties and the space hangouts and all that stuff. It's all just going to show up on your on your portable device. So if you much prefer to like just listen to I don't know why, you would want to listen to the virtual I don't know that either. would be very strange I, I think, to me. Uh, but... Isn't 365 Days of Astronomy ripping the audio from our shows? So, they I mean, do the. They only do no. They put on the weekly space hangout. The only oh, place okay. that you can get yeah. the audio for the weekly space hangout is on uh, 365. Yeah. So okay, I was just but, making sure. But there's, there's no request, place you can get the video. I request when I was producing that for a while. Like, oh, put it on the virtual star party. Like, it's a bunch of nerds talking about what they're seeing, and you can't see it. You can't see it. I don't. I don't. But imagine if you will. <laughs> imagine if you will. Yeah. I just All want right. to give a shout out to Sharin uh, in Malaysia, who's uh, oh, watching, yeah. but he's fighting hey, a Sha. volcano, so he couldn't. He couldn't join. You could have brought pictures of the volcano, Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, and uh, I guess I'll wrap this up, too. We are also on Facebook for the Virtual Star Party and on Twitter, the underscore VSP. So uh, give us a like on Facebook. Also follow us on Twitter. And so if you have any pictures that you take, please make sure that they're ones that you've taken. Uh, give us the info for it. What did you use to do it? And post them up on our wall and send us tweets at it and also on Google+. Plus. And we and would love to be able to feature them. for more people to join us. So if you yes. are an astronomer... And you want to take a crack at this? And you you know you think you can produce some images live? Join us. We'd love to have more people join us. And can you and, spot uh, a supernova in an image? Then <laughs> we'll yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna shut this down. So hey, thanks everyone right. for watching. Thanks right. everyone for joining. Right, I really appreciate it. And we'll see you all next week. Okay. Bye everyone. Uh,